Good morning, Gayla Kessler, everyone. Uh, I am incredibly honored to be here this morning. I uh, would like to thank Wade uh, Grant for the welcome to the territory, the ancestral lands of the Coast Salish people, in this case, particularly uh, the Musqueam. Thank you for your, your ongoing support. Um, thank Marple Neighborhood House for um, letting us be one of the first events in this beautiful new facility, uh, and which was opened last week. Thank you to Jasmine and to Dominique, merci beaucoup for the, the introduction. And thank you everyone for coming out this morning. I know it is a work day for most, if not all of us, and uh, thank you for the messages of those um, who could not be here but wanted to be here. So let me start by saying that um, it has been one of the greatest honors of my life to serve as uh, the, or the Member of Parliament for Vancouver Gramble. And I want to thank all of uh, the constituents for your ongoing and or your continued support. I've always been incredibly grateful to hear your views, questions, and suggestions. So today is a good day. I love um, to see the faces in the room and I am incredibly happy to be home in the riding to tell you about the decision that I've made. It is after much deliberation that I have decided to put my name forward for re-election in the 2019 election in Vancouver Gramble. <laughs> And in this election, I will be running as an independent candidate. So I want to tell you why, um, what brought me to make this decision. So in recent months, I've found myself in uncharted waters. Now sitting as an independent in the farthest corner on the west side of the House of Commons. During this time, I've had the opportunity to both reflect on what I, we, could learn from, about from the events that have transpired, and I've had the opportunity to hear from friends, colleagues, family. My husband is here, my sister Corey, my niece uh, Kaya and Kayleen. And of course, many of you, the constituents of Vancouver Granville, and indeed Canadians from coast to coast to coast. Incredibly, I have received over 15,000 emails, letters, cards, messages expressing support and encouragement. Many of these giving advice and sharing thoughts about what, should, what I should do next. So thank you, it really means a lot to me. The overwhelming message I received was clear. Clear how we need to do politics differently. That partisanship is trumping principle, that exclusion is trumping inclusion, and the lack of diversity of voices was simply unacceptable, and there is too much power in the center. In addition to the people kindly thanking me for what I did and asking that I remain in federal politics, I was consistently told by people young and old from all backgrounds that the events had inspired them, motivating them to get involved. Above else, to not be afraid to speak up, to speak truth. They were asking me to keep up the fight and stay involved. For every person that has come up to me on the street, in the grocery store, in a cafe, or in an airport, let me tell you, it has been you who have motivated me to make the decision today, to keep working alongside you to build a stronger Canada. I know that it will not be easy to run a campaign as an independent. There will be challenges. But with your support, I am confident that running as an independent is the best way to go about go about it at this time and the best way to transform our political culture. 
So let me say a few words about what being an independent means to me and why I believe it is important. We sometimes hear that politics is a team sport, that politics is also a blood sport. Well, I do believe in the importance of a strong team, but I'm not sure that there has to be any blood involved. And it is far too serious a business to call it a sport. After all, it is the lives of people and our future that is at stake. We live in complicated times for our communities, our country, and globally. Everywhere, environmental, economic, and security challenges are deepening. Moving forward, we cannot be, afford to be complacent. We cannot use the same ideas and attitudes and practices that brought us to this point to deliver the solutions we need. Yes, Canada is for sure one of the best, if not the best, countries in the world in which to live. But we can never take it for granted. In the face of the great challenges our world must address, many places in the world have chosen to erode democracy, traffic in fear and promote division, naively thinking that the response to the interconnected challenges that affect us all is to try and to protect a few and put up barriers. The truth is we have to do the opposite. Here in Canada, we have to build on our strengths and accomplishments that brought us together as a nation and allowed us to prosper. When the challenges we have to meet are collective ones, we need to respond through shared and joint efforts that use the distinct ideas, talents, and expertise we all have to offer. And in this reality, there is less room for overt partisanship in our evolving democracy. Rising to these challenges requires Ottawa to operate more openly and transparently in the spirit of nonpartisanship with increased cooperation. That is what I am now more than ever as an independent committed to advocating. As an independent, I will be truly free to take the guidance of the citizens of Vancouver Granville and to represent you. I will not have to try and convince myself that just because the way it has always been done means that it must continue to be done that way. As many of you in this room are aware, I came to Ottawa in 2015 from an unconventional political background to most. Before 2015, I had never been involved in provincial or federal politics and I had never been a member of a political party. My leadership experience before running to be your MP has been in the Indigenous world, advocating for transformation in the relations with Indigenous peoples. As some of you know, in my cultural teachings, we strive to work through consensus. While there are a diversity of views, tensions, and challenges, we do not entrench them in political parties and we often frown on personal ambition. The commitment to consensus, the importance of speaking the truth and striving to honor and uphold each other, these are the core values of my culture and teachings. This is what I know. In asking you to elect me as your representative four years ago, I pledged that I would strive as best I could to act differently than we had increasingly become accustomed to by politicians. And please don't get me wrong, I take great pride in what we have accomplished over the last four years. Many important initiatives were advanced both locally and nationally, but I wonder what more could have been accomplished on big issues, the big issues of our time, if it was a less partisan environment. And here I am thinking about how we tackle climate change as a matter of individual and collective health and well-being and as a matter of economic prosperity and national security. On this issue in particular, I see my friend and colleague Elizabeth May and the Green Party of Canada as natural and necessary allies. 
Climate change is the issue of our generation and we need to move the conversation forward and develop a plan that is nonpartisan, multi-generational, one that will survive the life of any government. Likewise, as an Indigenous Canadian, it is also important to me that reconciliation be purposeful and lead to a stronger system of cooperative federalism where Indigenous peoples are full partners in Confederation. This is good for all of Canada. Yes, we have made progress, but it is not enough. We can and must do more. As an Independent with like-minded colleagues, I can promote this. Moving forward, there are many other issues we need to discuss. Our riding, Vancouver Granville, is one of the most diverse in the country and growing really quickly. And we need to continue to focus, working at all levels of government, on issues such as housing and transportation, to name a few. I will be engaging in discussion on a wide range of policy issues throughout the campaign, but importantly, I want to hear from you. So talk to me. Please visit our website. Um, it goes live sometime today, fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> Your thoughts are most welcome. I also want to say this. We can support others to run as independents or to act more independently. My good friend and colleague, Dr. Jane Philpott, is making an announcement today about her political future, and I want to acknowledge her continued leadership. There are more MPs than you might think that see a need for a different way of doing politics and who do not like the current limitations of the party system. What some of us like to call independent partisans. These people want to collaborate. To be independent does not mean you're alone, working as one. On the contrary, it means you are committed to working with everyone. So my commitment to you, I will ensure that you have a strong voice in Ottawa that will work with whichever government is in power, as well as with all MPs, no matter their political stripe, for the betterment of Vancouver Granville and our country. And when I say independent, I mean it in the true meanings of the word. Free from outside control, not depending on another's authority, and not depending on another for livelihood or subsistence. The only thing I will depend on is the vision, service, and support of citizens in this riding and listening to the voices of Canadians from coast to coast to coast. But I need your help. To expand the idea and the role of independence, I first need to get re-elected. <laughs> and this is where you come in. This is where you come in and this is how we need and will continue to work together as we've done before, as we've done for 15 months preceding the previous election. I would welcome you to continue to volunteer to donate, but most importantly, continue to spread the message and have conversations about nonpartisan approaches to politics and solving major issues. So in closing, I am looking forward to the campaign. I know in all circles, the campaign has already begun, and I'm very much looking forward to our ongoing conversations. I am incredibly excited. It's been a long journey. I'm focused and I'm committed to working hard with all of you as we move into the 2019 election. Gela Kusla, thank you for your support. Thank you for coming here today.
our sun mask. It means a new beginning. Anyway, thanks everybody. The website is, is uh, www.reelectjodywr.ca and it will be uh, live later today and we'll be handing out cards. I don't know if they're being brought in um, to everybody to take one with you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Of course, yeah. Ah, uh, running for the Assembly of First Nations. I had the great privilege of being the regional chief for, for many years in the Assembly of First Nations and will continue to work with the regional chiefs and the national chiefs in whatever capacity I find myself. Um, I know that my time in federal politics isn't over. Um, as I said, it's been a unique experience for the last little while sitting as an independent member. Um, sitting as an independent member has opened up um, many different conversations that I might not have had um, previously. I have spoken with members of parliament from all different political parties. They have been um, very open to providing me uh, and other independents uh, the opportunity to speak in dialogue debates in the House of Commons. Um, but likewise, it also provides me with the opportunity to um, speak directly from the people of Vancouver, the voices from the people of Vancouver Granville and express them on the national stage. And I'm going to continue to do that um, and discuss issues that are free from partisan considerations that truly reflect um, the desires here and how we want to move. But how much are you well, I'm uh, looking forward to, I think I'm gonna get accomplished, we can get accomplished a lot, working together, removing partisanship, working to, um, as a first priority, to change the way the parliamentary system uh, operates, to make sure that all 338 members of parliament have the ability to, one, ensure that they can relay the views of their constituents, participate more fully in, in, or in uh, committee meetings, and to participate in, in debate in the House of Commons. I think it uh, would be an incredible benefit uh, to um, lawmaking and the development of sound public policy to ensure that all voices are heard. Uh, that all voices contribute to the discussion and in doing so create better public policy. Have you completely ruled out being national speaker? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm looking forward to doing everything I can and working hard to uh, be the independent uh, member of parliament for Vancouver Granville. That is my priority and that is what I'm committed to doing. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I think that's a, a question that you need to ask the Prime Minister. Um, I will say this, I, it has been, a, it's been a challenging five months. Um, I um, find myself in a place that I never expected to be for, as I've said, doing my job and speaking the truth. And I, regret that it has come to this place. Um, I think that some of, well, the issues could have been resolved a lot sooner. Um, but being in this place now has given me an enormous amount of time to reflect. And I am really pleased and happy with the decision that I've made that has been bolstered by so many people that have given me advice. And I can speak for myself personally. I'm going to continue to um, operate and work with integrity to ensure that I speak the truth and to relay the, the voices of the people of Vancouver Granville and I hope that all politicians in the House of Commons and I know that um, the vast majority if not all people that sit in the House of Commons want to do what's right and represent their community. So. But should a voter, a voter of this riding uh, vote for you rather than whoever runs liberally, uh, for the Liberals? I mean. 
Of course. <laughs> I, I, I don't believe that votes are um, simply need to be divided among three or four political parties. I believe in the people of Vancouver Granville. I believe in Canadians um, to make informed decisions about policy, informed decisions about the individuals that they um, are going to vote for. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm going to continue to work hard to um, get the support and continue to have support of the people in Vancouver Granville. Um, I, what, who I am is. Um, always present. I don't hide from that um, sometimes, maybe to my detriment, but what you see is what you get. If you ask me a question, I'll, I'll ensure that you get an answer. Uh, you uh, you uh, were talking about the too much power in the center, and that was also a criticism of Stephen Harper when you ran for the Liberals. So are you talking about something particular to Justin Trudeau moving, uh, becoming too much power in the center, or are you talking about a larger trend? <laughs> Well, I, I'm speaking broadly about partisan politics generally and political parties, I do not believe that being a member of a political party should mean that you have to set your principles aside or have to make decisions because somebody told you that that is the decision to be made. Um, I, again, believe in the importance of, of a strong team and putting forward um, uh, solutions to issues. Uh, but the challenge that, that I had, um, and I can only speak for myself, is when I got involved, and it was a really hard decision back in 2013, late 2013, um, I believed that we would be doing politics differently, that um, each member of parliament would have a role to play in public policy and lawmaking, that members of cabinet would be able to determine the way forward and lead the files. Um, I'm incredibly proud of the work that, that I was able to do with a huge team um, as the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General. Um, but I think that we need to ensure that the voices of the elected representatives of the ridings across the country are the ones that are making the policies on behalf of their constituents, not being um, dictated to or told what to do by non-elected individuals that happen to, to, to work in offices. Um, we need to move beyond what is traditionally um, thought of as the, as the establishment to individual voices of members of parliament to make sure that the issues that are of concern here are reflected and incorporated into the discussion. Thanks, and you also talked about the, the Green Party and you talked about Liz and May. Yeah. Um, there was rumors of you joining, so uh, and you talked about them being natural allies. So what, what does that mean in practice? Or what do you think it will mean in practice as an independent? Well, I, I mean, I had the opportunity to speak with um, uh, Mr. Singh, but um, I had um, many conversations with Elizabeth May. I consider her a friend. I consider her a colleague. We share um, so many um, approaches, the similar approaches to politics to wanting to move beyond partisanship. Um, she uh, uh, was very actively um, seeking for uh, myself and uh, Ms. Philpott to run for the Green Party, and uh, believe me, I considered it um, very seriously. Um, for me, uh, personally, I know who I am, and I'm not a party person. I'm not one that looks to take a square peg and fit it into a round hole. Having said that, um, that doesn't mean that I do not align um, quite closely with um, what the, the Green Party has put forward in terms of their approach to issues such as democratic reform, parliamentary reform, uh, looking at um, indigenous reconciliation, but most importantly, looking at climate change. So yes, I think there's a lot that um, the Green Party and, and myself and other independents and all parties um, can do together to address uh, um, for example, climate change. They have a, a comprehensive plan, the Green Party, around uh, addressing and tackling in a bold way climate change, and I, I believe that uh, um, everyone should check it out. Well, a lot of people see you running as an independent as a, a huge, great reason to share. How do you react? How do you, what's your vote? What do you 
Well, I, again, I don't see um, votes being uh, or having to be allocated to um, three or more political parties. I believe that individual citizens should determine who they vote for. Um, thinking about uh, who is going to be the next Prime Minister, I leave it in the hands of the voters of Canada. Um, I'm not uh, seeking to split any vote in the sense that of your question. Um, I'm still the same person I was, the same person that ran uh, for election in 2015. I still hold the same progressive values. I still believe fundamentally in equality, in inclusion, in justice for everyone. That is um, why I ran. That is why I initially back then um, got involved with the Liberal Party because I saw the ideology as being similar to mine. That hasn't changed. I would um, welcome people in Vancouver Granville to support me, to support those values that I stand for, the values that I think the vast majority of Canadians stand for. I just wonder if you stand here and kind of talk about a new beginning moving beyond the establishment. Do you see this as a referendum on you, or do you see it as a referendum on the Prime Minister, or both? I see... Um, and it's not too far away, the election. Um, thankfully for, for me and the incredible volunteers that we've had working um, since the day after the election and, and before that, we've continued to knock on doors in Vancouver Granville, continue to engage uh, with community uh, stakeholders, with um, different communities to make sure that we keep in touch with the issues that are important. So um, in that sense, the fact that the election is like five months away, we're, we're prepared. I have benefited so much from the strong relationships that, that I and our team have been able to build over the last three and a half years, and that's going to continue. So um, the last part of your question? Is it a referendum? Referendum. It is, um, I wouldn't say it's a referendum on any one particular person. I believe that this election is about, and it's, everybody says it's one of the, this election is the most important election um, that we've ever had, but I believe this one truly is one of those important elections. It's not a referendum on any one person. It's a referendum on how we can do politics differently. And I know that's somewhat of an overused phrase, but um, I think that moving into October of 2019, people should, of course, consider the, the platforms that uh, political parties are putting forward. Um, people should consider who can best represent them in Ottawa and if the system, the Westminster system that we have, or how political parties are representing, if there's consideration that can be brought in to how we can improve that, how we can um, move beyond the partisan nature of the discussions, I think that is um, uh, what people are going to, or I would encourage people to consider um, voting on moving into the election because ultimately, um, no matter um, what political party uh, you align yourself with, um, we have issues that are common beyond political stripes that we need to address. And, and if I can take from my own background, which I do and gain strength from every day, um, we never had, we don't have political parties. As Indigenous peoples in my culture, we work collectively, and we have vigorous debates and discussions, but we work collectively to ensure that the goal that we have um, is not what a political party necessarily thinks, but the goal is to ultimately improve the quality of life for everyone in that community. And everybody has a role to play, and I liken that to the system um, that would be beneficial to making sound public policy decisions in Ottawa. Yeah. As a young Indigenous woman, um, this, is, this is awesome. I find this really refreshing, what you're doing, because sometimes we get tired of politics. Uh, but your dad, uh, in 1983, he spoke before Pierre Elliott Trudeau Sr., and he said he had two daughters in, um, who were preteen who wanted to be lawyers, and one wanted to be the Prime Minister one day. Is there, <laughs> <laughs> is that you? <laughs> and what's your 20, is there a 20 year plan to define how politics is done? Well, that's, uh, that's my sister, Corey. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> truth, be truth be told, my dad had, had said this to me and, and my sister is that the person that I was really thinking about was Corey, not you. So. <laughs> um, 
seriously though, uh, I love that video of my father um, in 1983, sitting, going toe to toe with um, Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau. And when, and I've said this to several people, when he spoke about that he has two young daughters, um, that they want to be lawyers or want to be the Prime Minister, it wasn't necessarily determining um, our future or what we were going to do. It was reflective, and I've talked to my father about this, of his optimism at the time when he was sitting around the table talking about self-government. It was on uh, the heels of Section 35 of the Constitution and ensuring Indigenous peoples had um, and take their rightful place in Confederation. So it was an optimism about how if, no matter who you are, woman, a woman um, from a diverse culture, um, a member of the LGBTQ community, a member of um, a marginalized community, you can accomplish anything you want. That was the hope and the optimism that my dad had and still has. And um, I never had aspirations to be a member of parliament. <laughs> um, I certainly do now. Um, <laughs> and that is not just because I want to be a member of parliament, because I want to be able to contribute to the the discussion. Uh, I ran for, for many reasons. I want to ensure, as I said, that we tackle climate change and the environment, indigenous issues. I'm a strong believer of social, in social justice and addressing inequalities. Um, 20 years from now, what's, what's my plan? Um, I don't think that far ahead. Um, I, I want to work really hard to, to get um, elected as the Member of Parliament uh, in 2000, October 2019. And for me, throughout my political and professional career, things have unfolded as they should. I believe everything happens for a reason, and uh, we'll see 20 years from now where I'm at.